Hello, welcome to fifth, I think, episode. Um, today it's all about the electrics, so uh, let's get started and off to the bench. Right, just a few things to show you on the bench before I get cracking. First one is I uh, printed myself a little Wago mount. Um, I got the design from Thingiverse, sliced the bottom off, beefed up these supports slightly, and then just put the holes in them. And this is the stock kind of DIN rail mount from the Voron uh, STLs, which I think is an ingenious little design, because if you look down there, you've got your basically just enough spring just to clip them on and off his rails. He's really quite clever. But yeah, that's just going to make wiring up a lot easier. So this one's going to be for my DC. I'm going to have my ground at the bottom, all my grounds tied for both my power supplies. A 5 volt rail for lighting and Raspberry Pi. And that will be my 24 volt rail for the board and all the other bits and pieces that we need. So what do I need 24 volts on the board? the other LEDs, the 24 volt whites, uh, my probe, all that sort of thing that needs to be connected. And I've got a similar thing that's going to live in the bottom enclosure panel that's going to live, uh, do the same for basically the electrics coming in. But we'll we'll get on to that. I just wanted to show you that one while I've got a decent camera on him. Other thing is, instead of micro fits, which are in the bill of materials, I personally am going to use these little JST uh, I think they're ST or SM connections purely because I've got them. I've double checked the specs. They go up to 3 amps. Uh, they clip together nicely. I've got the tools to crimp them. I've got the crimps themselves. The maximum I'm going to put through them is probably about 2.5 amps for a 50 watt heating cartridge. So I'm well within spec there. And they should be good up to 85 degrees according to the JST spec sheet. So that shouldn't cause me any issues either. And I have made sure and taken the three of them that I think I need and made sure I can close the little door of the afterburner to tuck them all away nicely and keep everything neat. So without further ado, let's move on and do some actual electrics. So the right tools for the job do make life easier. So I've got my wire strippers here. So you just put your wire in there and off you go. Not going to lie, it didn't do a brilliant job on this kind of main heater wire coming out of the bed here. But that's because it's got a woven outer sheath, but it did a fairly good job. And then I just neatened up around the edges with a pair of side cutters, as you would find pretty much attached to most 3D printers. I was going to solder these connections in, but then somebody said, well, what about if you need to change your thermal fuse? So just to explain this, this is your thermal fuse so that if something goes horribly wrong and this heats up and heats up and heats up and never stops heating up, the thermal fuse hits 125 degrees, trips and severs your connection. So you put him in line with the live there, which you can't see with my hands in front of it, and that end goes out to your uh, SSR should the worst ever happen, but it shouldn't. So I'm actually going to put some spade terminals on these to make changing it easier should it ever trip and I need to replace it. The other thing about putting these on, and I basically followed where Nero put his, is don't put it somewhere where it's going to interfere with where the actual frame for the bed goes because he had to peel his off and move it, which was a pain in the neck. As you can tell, you can make the edges nice and neat with some masking tape. Why I didn't think to put the masking tape around this piece as well? You know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? So, without further ado, let's crimp these terminals. We're not going to do that. I only want the spades, uh, the spade end connectors. I don't have the actual spades that I need to connect into them. So, time for a change of plan. I'm going to go away and have a think. These, by the way, Engineer PAO 9s they were expensive, 40 quid for a glorified pair of pliers with a spring in them. But by God, they're lovely to use. They make it so much easier than the cheap Chinese jobs that I had before. And yes, I know they're made in China as well, but you know what I mean. So back to plan A. I'm going to solder them on again. And if this ever blows and needs replacing, I'm just going to end up 
putting some decent connectors in them when I've got them. Because at the minute, I just want to crack on. So uh, this is going to go badly because I'm going to do it on camera. First thing I'm actually going to do is tin the ends of these, which is going to take some doing, given they look like copper coated aluminium. Can you see them? Oh, could possibly if I was a little bit more in the center of shot. No, this, this camera is just not good enough for that, I don't think. But yeah, tin up my ends, whack a solder sleeve on after I've pre tinned the ends, and then uh, heat shrink them. must excuse my little mod here that's for trying to uh, surface mount components and I destroyed my original nozzle trying to fit this on hence I have a very jerry-rigged thin nozzle with a piece of uh, heat proof tape over the hole this would be much easier if this camera wasn't being held by the other helping hands. But, you know, never mind. We'll get there in the end. It's never had smoke coming out of it before. So, all done now for this part on the bed. We've got this connection in here. This connection coming out of him. So this will go into my SSR on the live side at 240 volts. This one that's connected all the way back still will just go into the neutral. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much job done for him. Now, time to get off the bench and head down onto the actual printer itself. I haven't worked out how I'm going to do the footage for that one yet. I lied. I'm not at the printer. As you can see, I'm still here. One thing I did forget to say is about adding our earth. Which is going to be in one of these pre-drilled holes that I did in the back corners. Hindsight, again, being a wonderful thing. Why didn't I drill a hole to mount my earth here? where he just bundle up nicely with these to go down into my base. But never mind, you live and learn. Fat fingers do not go well in little drawers. So, I've got myself some cable here. Um, I'm actually going to use proper colouring for my mains cabling because that stops any sort of nasty accident and grabbing hold of what you think is a 12 volt or a 5 volt wire and it being 240 volts. So I've gone with the UK green and yellow earth wires, crimp myself a nice ring crimp on there, make sure he's good and strong on. I'm not going to lie. This may not be the first ring crimp I've tried on this piece of cable. I'm not very good at it. Got one of my M5 uh, button head screws, the kind that you use all around your frame. And I've lost the two little spacer washers that I had. Oh no, I haven't. There they are. Because this is a 10mm screw and an 8mm bed. So, on all your electrics, Earth is probably the... Uh, the most important of all of it because should something go wrong it's gonna one be the one that hopefully you will uh, save an injury becoming too serious it'll still hurt like a bugger or save you burning down your house both of which are possibilities so with, as ever with electronics if you're not sure and you're not comfortable always refer to somebody who's qualified to do it um, always check the regulations wherever you live in terms of what you are and are allowed to do with your electrics in your house. What I would say as well is, you know, I'm showing you how I'm doing it here. I'm not endorsing that you do things the same way as me because I am not going to be liable if you damage yourself or your house. 
this is just the way I'm doing it. Um, and can you tell I do insurance for a job? Because that was very technical. But yeah, this is just showing you what I'm doing. So we'll just tighten this down now with one of these Allen keys that has now stuck to the magnetic plate on the other side of this bed, which I didn't think about before uh, doing this, and that's the wrong size. I've got a thousand Allen keys around here. There's never one the size you want. Try that one. Excellent. And now I'll just run him down this way. And he can come out here with the rest of my wiring. And jobs are good. Un. Right, I really am going to the printer this time. Did you think you were going to get a preview of the, what the printer looked like? Not quite yet. Um, this is what it looks like from underneath. So the way the 1.8 is laid out is that your bottom panel here, this bottom cavity, has all your mains level electrics in it. All of your kind of logic level as it were, so your 24 volt and your 5 volts, although technically logic's 5 volt, but anyway, the 24 and 5 volt bits all kind of go in this compartment here at the back and there is a little kind of cut through here to go between the two. Excuse the way it looks with my coated post specs there and a piece of paper here. My cheapo cheap camera really just couldn't handle the contrast between my black deck plate and the nice shiny and white bits actually in here. Hence it looks like this to at least get a semi, well, as reasonable as it can be picture. So what we've got in here, obviously we've got our main power supply, which is the LRS 224. Um, I have tested the output of that to make sure he's set for 24 volts. He needed a little bit of adjustment. Here we've got an LRS55. It's a lot beefier than the one on the spec because I had it sat on my desk next to me spare. To tell you the truth, I thought there may be something wrong with it, but I've gone and tested it and he all seems fine. Um, so it wasn't him tripping the electrics in this room previously. So never mind. But like I say, he was completely spare. I know he works because I've tested him since and nothing blew up um, and I've checked the output for 5 volts so that 5 volt is going to drive my Pi and also my lighting circuit. This one over here is going to drive the, uh, the main printer board and all those bits and pieces. Here we've got the terminal blocks, the Wago blocks that I showed you the printout of earlier and here if you want the simple answer, it's a smart switch so that I can turn a printer on and off from my phone. I can get the Wi-Fi to control it. Um, I, I run a home automation system. If you really want to know about that, this is actually a Sonoff Power 2, so it's a power monitoring one. I flashed it with Tasmosa um, so it can talk direct to Home Assistant. I won't say any more here because you'll either know what that means or it'll mean nothing to you because it has nothing to do with this. And final piece of our puzzle over here is our SSR um, relay for driving the heat bed because the way that this works is that, I think I said before, your Pi plugs into one side of this, your heat bed live that I just soldered the thermal fuse in line with goes to the other side. So you feed your 240 volts in one end, your Pi in there, I'll just check I've got my in and out the right way, yes, and my input here. So that goes in there. My 245 load goes on this side, so one in, two out, I assume, but I'm going to double check that before I make it go pop. And basically, it's going to PWM a mains level signal to get our bed just to the right temperature so it stays at the right temperature. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to not make you sit and watch me crimp up wires because yeah, life's too short. I'll crack on that. I'll bring you back here once I'm done. Right, so we've had to lose the piece of paper, so apologies for the bad uh, contrast. Hopefully you can work out what's going on. So down here, 
we've got the switch. I've got the earth coming off of it straight into this bottom terminal block here. Um, the, pos the live and neutral go across to the switch, which is on this side here. Um, and then the live and neutral coming out of the switch. So we've got an external power switch comes through here and they come into this sewn off switch here. So we've got the lives which are, sorry, the neutrals which are permanently joined. I've come into here anyway so that it's properly balanced and that comes out into a terminal block. The live input comes in here from our switch down the front, comes out here and into the terminal block. So now we've got the ground terminal block, sorry, the earth terminal block, and then we've got a neutral and a live terminal block as well. All sat on the back of this uh, smart switch, this power monitoring smart switch. So then, as you'd expect, coming out of these grounds, we've got the bed plate, the heated bed, because he's grounded. We've got the ground that comes out and goes to this mean well. We've got the ground that comes out and goes to that mean well. Neutrals and lives the same, one to each mean well. What we also have though on the live side here, you can see it, is this live coming into uh, number three, sorry, number one as it were, on the load side of our SSR here. And this here, the number two on the SSR, goes out to our thermal fuse and into our heated bed. This side of the SSR is not connected. This is what the logic signal is going to come in on from the controller board when it tries to control um, our heated bed. Um, what's missing from here so far is obviously, like I say, those coming out of our controller board. And then I'm just going to run the wires from these terminals here, which is your plus five volt and ground and plus 12 volt and ground through into this cabinet here where I don't know if you can just make out down there is another thing full of uh, Wago terminal connectors so that I'll have a ground a plus 5 volt and a plus 12 volt kind of terminal blocks down here to connect everything up to to uh, try and keep it all neat so for now I'm gonna throw this cover on here probably give it a quick test just to make sure that nothing goes bang and everything comes on that I'm expecting to come on as can be then I'll hook up these outputs to the Wago terminals down here and we'll have a little look at wiring up in the back cavity but before that I have got to take the SKR out of my ender because the spider still hasn't shipped yet um, and I'll swap that out when it gets here, but obviously I want something in here so I can try and get it moving But that's a video for another day because it's past my bedtime. So I'm going to call it a day at this one Hopefully seeing it kind of laid out and seeing me trace the wires has helped a little bit because I know sometimes this does cause a bit of confusion. I Did look up this SSR data sheet it can go both ways. I confirmed that with the guys on Discord who know their stuff better than I do. But apart from that, I think our bottom cabinet's done. Obviously, I'll need to run the wires for the stepper down to the control board as well. But for the minute, I'm just worrying about power, and then I'll worry about everything else after that. <laughs> 